to YouTube, this is Phil with a Life of Adventures and I know you're saying if this is called Life of Adventures why aren't you ever on an adventure? Well, if you've ever made a YouTube video you'll understand what an adventure is because every time you pull a video camera out to do something with it and then put a video together it's an adventure, trust me. Today I want to talk to you about hang gliders. I want to talk to you specifically about the hang gliders that I'll be flying here shortly um, in the training that I do. The hang gliders were produced by a company called Will's Wing. They've been in business since 1973. I'll put a link to their website down below. Look at the, you can look at the um, hang gliders that they have and they put out. They put out several. And the first one I want to talk about is a hang glider called the Condor 330. Now in their numbering scheme, Will's Wing numbering scheme, the number indicates the square feet of the sail. The sail is the area that the cloth covers on the hang glider itself. So whenever you see a brightly colored um, hang glider, that's what's called the sail in, in the vernacular of hang gliders. Okay? The Condor 330 is the first training type of hang glider that I'll be on. The design of the hang gliders, to give you a rough estimate, the bigger the square footage on the hang glider, the less maneuverable it is. Just like a bird. You see a really large bird, he doesn't maneuver quite as fast as the small ones do, right? And that's the same way with a hang glider. As the square footage area of a hang glider comes down, it becomes much more maneuverable than a higher square footage hang glider. And in this particular case with the Condor 330, it's really designed to do nothing but to go in a straight line and they'll tow me up to a low altitude, 10 feet, somewhere between 10 and 50 feet. And the task with this Condor 330 will be to just keep it in a straight line because that's what they're designed to do to begin with. And they really are more difficult to turn anyway. So I'll be dealing with just what wind that I have and also trying not to over control the glider. That's one thing about a hang glider and also with aircraft. Uh, you don't want to over control them at all. You just want to um, fly them and move them when you have to do it. Not any other time. You don't want to be sitting there and got the shakes and it's going all over the place. So the Condor 330 will be the first one that I end up um, flying in and Shortly after that, I'll go to the uh, Alpha 210, the 330, and then I'll go to the 210. Of course, this one's got 210 square feet in it. And I wanted to show you this one because it gets us, gives us a good chance to look at the design of this wing. And the design of this wing is very... Um, common amongst hang gliders. As you can see, it's a triangular shape, which is the way most hang gliders are. There are some are a little weirder triangle, but mostly they're in a triangular type shape. At the top of the triangle, going down the two sides, if you will, that's called the leading edge of the wing. And right down the middle, that thicker bar that goes right down the middle, is the keel, that's the backbone, if you will, of the hang glider. And then about halfway down the hang glider, you'll see a, um, you'll see a horizontal bar that goes from side to side. That's called the crossbar. And that, again, is a, a member that keeps the wing rigid so that it's you know, not going to fold up on you or anything in the middle of the air. And then the bottom of the triangle is called the trailing edge. 
and that's just basically what it is. It's just basically when you get down to that point, it's virtually all material, and it's just hanging off the back. The bars that go vertically in between the keel and the wing tips are called battens, and those are strengthening bars that you actually you put them in every time before you fly as you take a hang glider down. Between flights, you fold a hang glider up, and then when you get done, it's you move it back out. Okay, you, you unfold it and, and do that. With the hang glider that I'll be using, uh, the next one I'm going to talk to you about, it's 39 feet from one side to the other to go across. Excuse me, it's 30 feet going from one side, from wingtip to wingtip. And when you fold it down as one unit, it's actually 19 feet from the tip of the nose to where the bottom of the wings fold down. Now that created a problem for me because I don't have anything that can haul something that's 19 feet. I have a car, I don't have a truck or anything like that. So they have what they call short packs. And they basically put more things that you can disassemble in them. And so it can cut it down to where I'll only have to carry something that's seven feet long, less than seven feet long. And that, in fact, will make it easier for me. I can just put that inside the car. And so you'll hear more about that later. It's talking about a short pack. But that's basically the anatomy of a, um, of a hang glider. And the final one I want to talk to you about is the Wills Wing Falcon 4 170. Wills Wing, the Falcon 4 comes in three sizes, if you will. Comes in the 145, the 170, and the 195. Again, those uh, are indicative of the square footage in the sale. But the other thing it is, is that based on your weight, your individual weight, is which hang glider that you pick, the 145, the 170, or the 195. The um, 175, which is the one, or excuse me, the 170, which is the one I'll be flying, is the weight range in this one. The optimum weight range is between 140 pounds and 170 pounds, and I'm at 155, which puts me right in the middle. So this is the best hang glider for me. It will perform the best and do everything that I want it to. Uh, these hang gliders can be used for distance flying. Um, you can get um, speeds of, uh, you know, a Above 30 miles an hour, it could be 35 miles an hour in these, in these, and uh, you know they're very much will give you a bird-like feel. Uh, I think the other thing that again that I haven't experienced yet, but from flying planes, when you're in a cockpit of an airplane, you really don't get that flying feeling necessarily like you do in a bird, like you would if you were a bird. And I'm really anxious to find out if I get that bird feeling. I don't know, I've talked to a lot of people that talk about the fact that when they were little, and I did certainly, I had a lot of dreams about being a bird. Don't know why, but I just did. And I always envisioned myself of, of flying and, you know, down different places and things like that. And I was seeing it from a, a bird's eye view, if you will. And so I'm anxious to see if this gives me that or if it goes back to what I'm used to out of the cockpit in an airplane. Uh, it's just there, you know, you don't think about it. And so that'll be an interesting um, thing that I want to find out. So if you got any questions about any of these, I'll explain more about them as I go, uh, as I get into them and I you know, I work with them, but I just wanted to give you a little bit um, of a heads up so you know what to look forward to, and it shouldn't be much longer now, hopefully, uh, that the snow gets off the ground here and I'll be able to start the actual hang gliding part of my adventure. So if you've got any questions or anything, leave a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer it for you. Have a good day.